Arduino makes a wide variety of different boards using different types of microcontrollers produced by an international electronics company called Admel. If you visit the Arduino page, you can see boards of different shapes and sizes, including those that are small enough to embed in clothing. The two boards that I have used for DCC++ are the Arduino Uno, also known as Arduino Standard Reference Board, and the Arduino Mega 2560. The 2560 is basically a larger version of the Uno, with expanded memory and additional input-output pins. Hence, all of the DCC++ code written for the Uno works without modification on the 2560 as well. So for now, let's focus on the Uno, and in a separate video, I'll explain some of the things you can do with the Mega 2560 if you use its extra memory and its input-output pins. Here it is, the Arduino Uno. This small board, which is widely available on the internet and in electronic stores for $25 or less, is used by hobbyists around the world to control homebrew robots, home automation devices, interactive art, lighting, sensors, detectors, and virtually any type of project where you want a computer processor to interact to and link with the physical world. This concept is known as the Internet of Things. In our case, the thing we are going to interact with is a model railroad. The board layout is quite simple. The big chip here is the microcontroller itself. It's the Atmel ATmega328 with 32K of flash memory and 2K of SRAM. On the left, there are two connectors. This one takes a standard USB cable. It's how we connect the Arduino to a computer for programming and communications. Since USB cables also provide power, whenever the Arduino is connected into a computer via USB, you don't need to provide a separate power supply. But if the Arduino is not connected to a computer, you will need to power it up. And one of the ways to do so is by connecting a small DC power supply through this connector here. Around the edge of most of the Arduino, you will find female header pins containing small square slots into which you can insert a bare wire or a male header pin. Each of these slots has a circuit that connects back to one of the components on the board. Many of these pins connect back to the individual pins on the microcontroller itself. Labels next to each slot indicate which pin on the microcontroller the slot is connected to. Zooming in to see these labels with the video camera is a bit tricky, so to make things more legible, let's temporarily switch to a graphic representation of the Uno. I'm a big fan of open source software, and one of the programs I use to help visualize electronic circuits is called Fritzing. It comes with an excellent library of components, including fully labeled graphics of various Arduino boards. This is a nice one of the Uno, clearly showing all of the header pin labels. Some of the pins on the Arduino Uno are dedicated to a very specific function, such as providing power or ground connections. For example, at the bottom of the board, we see a pin labeled V in for voltage input, a few pins for ground wires, a five volt output pin, which is typical digital voltage, and a 3.3 volt output pin, which is often used as digital voltage for low power devices. However, the majority of the pins on the headers of the Arduino are general purpose input output pins or GPIOs that can perform a variety of functions. Their exact behavior is determined dynamically according to the software you've programmed into the Arduino. This flexibility is what makes microcontrollers so useful. At the top, you'll see there are 14 so-called digital pins labeled 0 through 13. These pins can be configured as either digital inputs or digital outputs. If you configure any of these pins to be a digital input, then your program can read a digital voltage being applied to the pin from some external source. If it detects something around plus 5 volts, your program returns a value of 1. If it detects something around 0 volts, the program returns a value of 0. Voltages anywhere in between always round to either a 0 or a 1. A program that reads input from a digital pin 
cannot tell the difference between, say, 0.5 volts and 0.9 volts. If instead your program configures any of these pins as a digital output, the program can dynamically set the pin to output either 0 volts or plus 5 volts. Since this is a digital output pin, there are no intermediate values between 0 and plus 5 volts. But that's okay, because recall that the DCC logic signal we want to produce with the Arduino is nothing more than a digital signal that flips back and forth between 0 and plus 5 volts every 58 or 100 microseconds. So it seems that we should be able to configure any of these 14 pins as a digital output and use it to generate a DCC logic signal. Continuing our tour, we see at the bottom of the board a set of six pins labeled A0 through A5. These pins can be configured by your program to also behave as digital inputs or digital outputs. And if configured as a digital output, it would seem that any of them can also be used to generate a DCC logic signal. But these six pins are somewhat special in that they can each be alternatively configured as an analog input. When configured as such, your program can read how much voltage from 0 to plus 5 volts is being applied to any one of them. This is accomplished via the microcontroller's built-in 10-bit analog to digital converter. Input voltages of 0 return the number 0 to your program. Input voltages of plus 5 volts return the number 1023 to your program. And input voltages somewhere between 0 and plus 5 volts return to your program a proportional number between 0 and 1023. We will make very good use of this functionality to monitor total DCC track current on our layout. But, as you will see, we'll only need to use a few of these special analog input pins for that purpose, which means most are free to be configured as a digital output. So that means there are 20 distinct pins we can potentially use as digital outputs. How do we choose which one to use to produce our DCC logic signal? As discussed, the signal we are going to create with the Arduino is not a full bipolar DCC power signal, but just a lower voltage digital precursor where we flip the signal between 0 and plus 5 volts either every 58 microseconds to create a 116 microsecond pulse that encodes a DCC 1 bit, or we flip the signal every 100 microseconds to create a 200 microsecond pulse that encodes a DCC 0 bit. To create such pulses, we can certainly write a program for the Arduino that configures one of its 20 GPIO pins as a digital output. That program would also contain a sort of a looping logic that processes each bit request, sets the pin voltage to plus 5 volts, then waits 58 microseconds to properly encode a 1 bit or 100 microseconds to encode a 0 bit, then sets the pin back to 0 volts, and then waits for another 58 or 100 microseconds to complete the pulse. And of course, this only encodes a single DCC bit. Our program would have to instruct the microcontroller to keep repeating this process over and over for every bit we need to encode. And DCC requires that we send some combination of 0 and 1 bits to tr tracks on a continuous basis. The problem with this approach is that having a program continuously need to instruct the microcontroller to flip the output of a pin between 0 and plus 5 volts every 58 or 100 microseconds is very time intensive. So much so that the microcontroller would not have any time to perform any other processing, such as figuring out which DCC bits it actually should be sending in the first place. And it certainly would have no time at all to listen for and then process user instructions on how to control the trains. Nor would it have any time left over to communicate with the DCC++ graphical interface. What we need is a way of producing 116 and 200 microsecond digital pulses to encode DCC 0 and 1 bits without consuming all of the processing power of the microcontroller so that the microcontroller has time for the many other tasks we need it to perform. As discussed, in theory we could write a program for the Arduino to produce DCC logic signals on any of the UNO's 20 digital pins. Unfortunately, Using such a brute force method is not a good idea since running the program would consume too much of the microcontroller's processing time for it to perform any other tasks. But there is another way. Note that the number labels for pins 3, 5, 6, 9, 10, and 11 
are each prefixed with a tilde character. As indicated, this means that these six pins are enabled with a pulse width modulation functionality, or PWM. PWM is a ubiquitous technique used to create custom logic pulses for a wide variety of applications, from dimming the brightness of LEDs to setting the positions of digital servos. What makes PWM so powerful is that it can be implemented directly in low-level circuitry. More so, this circuitry is embedded within the Arduino's microcontroller, but operates independently from its central processing unit which means that PWM signals can be produced without consuming any processing time. This is exactly the type of functionality we need to generate our DCC signals. However, the default behavior of the Arduino is to produce PWM signals where all the pulses have the same fixed duration. Standard Arduino commands only allow you to change or modulate the relative width of the first half of the pulse. The ratio of the duration of the positive portion of the pulse to the duration of the entire pulse is known as the duty cycle. For DCC signals, we need a duty cycle of 50%, which we can certainly set with standard Arduino commands. But these standard commands will not allow us to alter the total duration of the pulse. To do so, we must use some of the Arduino's more advanced functionality to directly configure what are known as timer counters. The Uno contains three such circuits embedded within the microcontroller. Timer counter 0 is used to control PWM generation on pins 5 and 6. Timer counter 1 controls pins 9 and 10, and timer counter 2 controls pins 3 and 11. As just described, in the Arduino's default mode, the total duration of the pulses is fixed, though you can specify the duty cycle. However, by directly configuring the settings of the individual timer counters, you can create longer or shorter total pulse durations to perfectly match the 116 and 200 microsecond requirements for DCC logic signals. To do so, we must change the parameters of the timer counters in a way that sacrifices some of the PWM flexibility of one of the pins of each timer counter, rendering pins 6, 9, and 11 useless for our purposes. Also, it turns out that the specific properties of the timer used by timer counter 2 is not as well suited as the other timers for producing the exact customized PWM signals we require. So that eliminates pin 3, leaving us with just two pins from our original 20 that we can use to generate DCC logic signals. So which pins do we use? Both, of course. This is because a DCC model railroad really requires two separate DCC signals, one for the main operations track and one for a dedicated programming track. And wouldn't you know it? We just happen to have two ideally suited pins on the Arduino that we could use. So to sum things up, we are going to configure an Arduino Uno to use two out of its three microcontrollers built-in timer counters to create custom PWM signals that very precisely match the NMRA's DC specifications for encoding 0 bits and 1 bits. We will create two such logic signals, one on pin 10 that we will use for the main operations track, and one on pin 5 that we will use for a dedicated programming track so that we can fully program the DCC decoders within each engine. How to create such configuration? And how does the Arduino know when to produce DCC 1 bits versus DCC 0 bits? All of that logic, as well as a lot of other functionality, is exactly what we are going to program into the Arduino. But before we discuss the actual Arduino DCC++ program, we still have one rather big question to answer. How are we going to convert the low voltage DCC logic pulses we will generate on pins 5 and 10 into full voltage, full current, bipolar DCC power signals?